All right, we're on page 47 of math analysis. We're in notes five, we're graphing secant, cosecant, and really what we're doing is graphing sine and cosine. Um, so let's get started and see if we can do this. So what I'm gonna do in this one is, is more of what I would actually do. So I don't usually write the entire guide function. I just, you know, above this write uh, cosine. So we're using cosine as our guide. So it's gonna be 10 cosine, all that stuff, and then minus 15. So everything stays the same, but secant changes to cosine. So the period is going to be two pi divided by two pi divided by nine fifths. So that's going to be ten pi over nine, which makes the increment uh, that divided by four. So ten pi over thirty six. So five pi over eighteen. And you can tell that this is going to be a pleasant problem. Um, so let's see. I might actually use a calculator to speed up some of the. Uh, labeling the x-axis, maybe. Um, and now that I said that, I feel like I should just to show you how you can do that. But the starting point, we're gonna take everything in parentheses here, set it equal to zero and solve. So basically what that amounts to is we move this over and we get positive three pi over four. Then we're gonna multiply by five, so that's positive 15 pi over four, and divide by nine, that's 15 pi over 36. I guess we could uh, you know what, maybe I'll leave that because 18, so I'm gonna say 15 pi over 36. 15 pi over 36. Because I need the least common denominator of uh, 18 and third, and basically, oh wait, can I use, no, because if I divide by three, I get 12. So I'm just gonna use 36. So I'll make this 10 pi over 36. And now I'm realizing there's actually no reason to use a calculator. So I'm probably not going to because it's a little faster than not. Um, but let, well, let me show you. So what we would do is if I wanted to speed this up, I know that uh, to get like the, the X coordinates, the X, I don't know, let's say X C's, right? For, um, and then it'll be a function of N. To get all the marks I'm gonna make on the X axis, I wanna do basically, the starting point, 15 pi over 36. And then I need to add kind of n times uh, the, the increment, which is 10 pi over 36. And then what I wanna do is generate those. So what I can do is sequence SEQ, and then XC of n, and then n. And then if I just have n go from like uh, zero to one, right? Then it's gonna take n is zero, plug it in, get a value. n is one, plug it in, get a value, and then be done. So these are the things that I would put on the axis. If I wanted to, um, so I have to go intercept, maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept. So I really need five. So if I go from zero to five, this gives me all the things that I would wanna put on the axis. Um, and then if I go negative five to five, I kinda of know exactly how to go across the axis and it's like really fast. So sometimes I will do that. Um, I'm not gonna do it here because I think it's easy enough to add these um, as I go, but if I needed to, to speed it up, I would definitely not think twice about using the calculator on that part, because that's, that's like a four function calculator type of deal, except for the pi probably. So sinusoidal axis is y equals negative 15. I can go up 10 to y equals negative five. I can go down 10 to y equals negative 25. And then asymptotes domain and range you save until the end. So now what we want to do is dot in everything for the guide function. So I need to go from negative 25, negative five to negative 25. So I think I'm actually just gonna count by fives and maybe put zero here. And let's see how that works. Negative five, negative 10, negative 15. You have to like plot this out. That gives me two above and two below. That's like perfect. I should be doing that more often. Um, okay, so I can put it in, so I'm going to put in the x-axis. I, I always try to get the x-axis in my graphs. Um, the y-axis I just don't really care about. But you, you wanna have the x-axis because it's, you know, it's where you're gonna put all your tick marks and everything. Just a little, the, you definitely want the independent variables axis to be on your graph. The dependent variable is just scale, so that can go on the side or, or wherever. So let's see, I need to start in the middle at 15, pi over 36, so 15 pi over 36. And then we're actually just gonna keep adding 10. So it'll be 25, it'll be 35. 
and then uh, 45. I almost like forgot what I was doing there. This part is probably the most annoying, especially when the values aren't great. This one, I mean, this isn't bad, hopefully. There's always a chance I'm just doing it wrong, um, which I don't know. Usually people let me know in the comments because I do not go back and watch the videos. So, and then, so I try to break them up into like reasonable bites because I mean, it's nice, I guess for you, but really it's in case I have to go back and completely re-record one. I don't wanna, I wanna have to do that for like a 30 minute video, which is like if it's eight minutes, like sure, I'll go back and fix that. Okay. so. Sinusoidal axis for the guide function is at negative 15. So I'm going to dot that in. Dot, dot. And like you, you kind of, when you get really good at it, you don't really need to dot this in if you don't want to. I always do just for uh, clarity, I think. Uh, and now what's our pattern? So it's, it's essentially a positive cosine. So it's maximum intercept, minimum intercept, maximum. The maximum is negative five, and that's going to be at the start. So where's the start of this thing? So here's our start. So we're at a maximum there. So that's gonna be here. And then I go open circle here because it's gonna become a vertical asymptote. And then here, and then open circle. You could actually just put in the asymptotes if you wanted to. It's probably like a better strategy actually. So I know that this will be an asymptote. And then just make sure you're like not messing up the pattern which, you know, you always hope you're not. And it's like longer dashes are probably better, but definitely more efficient. So here I'm gonna go, it would be an intercept, so it becomes a vertical asymptote. This would be a minimum, so put in a dot. This would be an asymptote, uh, an intercept rather, so it becomes an asymptote. Uh, this would be a maximum, so put in a dot, and this would be an intercept, so we put in an asymptote. It looks a little cleaner that way. Now, you can dot in uh, your guide if you want, right? So the guide would be, more or less this, but I'm not gonna do that because I already know what's happening, right? You're never gonna cross the sinusoidal axis, so I have to go like this, and then like this, and I have to go like this. So I'm a big fan of graphing these things like kind of a, a quarter period at a time. I feel like it gives you the chance to error correct a little bit more. But also, I'm just not good at making these kinds of curves. If you are good at that, feel free to do it in one shot. Who am I to tell you how to do this? Okay, so we got that. Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to find the domain, the range, and then I'm going to go back to the calculator and have it find the domain and see if we agree. And if we agree, then I'm probably right. Um, if we don't agree, then, you know, you can make some, some changes. So the asymptotes here, I need, uh, where it's one asymptote that I see. I'm going to say uh, 5 pi over 36. And then how far to the next one is 20 pi over 36. So it's gonna, so I'm basically looking at this, and then the next one I see is 25 pi over 36. So x equals 5 pi over 36 is one asymptote. And then how far apart are they? They are 20 pi over 36 apart times n, where n is an element of the integers. Very impressed if anyone can get that all in that box. I cannot. Um, which means I should probably give you more space, but I'm also probably not going to do that. So domain is all reals except the asymptotes. So x can't be uh, 5 pi over 36 plus 20 pi over 36. And so when I check on the calculator, it's definitely going to reduce things, which is like the one thing. It's great that it does that, but it, it's, it'd be nice if there was like a don't simplify mode. And then the range is like the complement of the range of the guide function. The guide function is stuck between negative 25 and negative five. This function is going to be um, like everything else. So you can go negative infinity until you get to negative 25, which I'm gonna say is y is less than or equal to negative 25. 
and then you can go from negative five up to infinity. So I'm just gonna say y is greater than or equal to negative five. All right, so let's go back to the calculator and see how we did. So, and hopefully it's right. Uh, the, the despair I will feel if it's not right. So what I'm gonna do, do I have the, I don't have the function. I'm gonna do f of x is, so that's colon equals 10 secant of nine fifths x minus three pi over four minus 15. All right, so you can actually find the domain on the calculator by typing domain. Uh, you can also find that in the catalog. I'm not sure where else that is hiding. It seems like it should be in algebra, but I don't think it's in the menu anywhere. But if you type domain, and then you have to tell it what function and what the variable is in the function. So uh, now this is a thing that will happen. I'm gonna say that I have to expand that. So expand is actually in the algebra menu. So menu, option three, option three, expand this. So it's not gonna tell you it's all reals, but it will say uh, sort of a generalization, right? So we said um, we had five pi over 36 and then plus 20 pi over 36 times n. So let me just simplify that. Okay, so the five, five pi n over nine is definitely right. Now the starting points are kind of different. So what if I take mine and first, let's just subtract five pi over nine, right? Like let n equal negative one. We get negative five pi over 12. Now they're exactly the same. We got the same domain, which means barring some other weird thing, we must have gotten this right. Um, the other thing that we could have gotten wrong is the range. It's not really a, an easy way to find the range other than, I mean, you can definitely, uh, you can graph. So if I just graph f of x and then uh, let's change the window. So let's go, uh, I mean, I don't really know. I'm gonna go like negative, well, negative 10 to 10, I guess is enough. Let's go negative 35 to five. So I think I'm going 10 above and 10 below. Uh, and here, if we find the minimum and the maximum, so this is, these are ways you can use your calculator and you should use your calculator um, to make sure that you understand what's happening here. That, what on earth? Uh, hold on, let me try that again. That was definitely not, oh, you know what it is? I chose minimum and then I went to the, so now I'm looking for a maximum. This is what I'm looking for. Okay, the maximum there, negative 25. Anything below that, and then if I do the minimum, so you should be using your calculator all the time to try to check things, um, also just to learn more, right? So one disadvantage on the graphs is that it will um, not give you things in terms of high when you're like tracing, finding maximums, finding minimums. A thing you can do is you can do your own trace, menu five, press enter, and now just type it, right? So say, I think 55 pi over 30, well, 55 pi over 36 is probably really big. Um, well, maybe it's not. Let's try it. 55 pi over 36. I think that should go with negative five. And it does. Um, so you can type them in and just check and see if you got them right. I'm going to go back to the notes and then call it quits on this video and come back in the next video and do the next problem on the page, which is just another graph. I say just another as if like, you know, these are kind of a lot of work, but there you go. So I'm going to stop the video here, come back, do the next one, and I hope to see you there.